Something's here. Hidden. This house belonged to a certain Antipas and Clemency Gibbs. Their land was barren. They were struggling for money. Look up. The ooze... uh... oozed. And of all of them, just this one house fell down. Maybe it was personal. This house had been targeted by the ooze. Obviously. Look around you. Mr. and Mrs. Gibbs, have you read my paper? I read it, aye. And then I washed my hands and prayed for grace. You claim to prove that there is no curse. Well... A witch would say that, wouldn't she? Wherever people gather to live, disease takes hold, and I believe... What are you doing? Your evil lies shall be destroyed. We know who you are, and you shall be judged. Witch! They were determined to do for her. She built a case for her rationality, and they tore it apart. Standing by. Mrs. Gibbs, I presume.
another shadow. What do they want? Red, something is keeping me from manifesting. In here? Ah, oh, shite. Take care. The place is warded. I am warded. I cannot. Wards. Think you can fend for yourself? I see a ghost ward. What are they doing down here? Take care. The place is warded. I don't think so. Better. You're welcome. Now let's inspect the body. I'm right here. Standing by. Someone didn't want to stay dead. Clemency Gibbs blamed the epidemic on a witch. Come from New Eden time with the governor. That's not what Deborah's research pointed at. The Gibbs were not at home to rational explanations.
that's unfit for us to cross. See anything? Either the water table is full of ooze, or there's another source. Why search upstream? Over there. Oh, loose of little buggers. Don't step in that. I mean it. Find a way around that. Ghost wards cannot manifest. And you will not be judged. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Those echoes we're hearing, or the shadows speaking. They always appear near the ooze. So do the whispers. But which came first? Destroy those ghost wards, if you want me back. <laughs> Wasn't I always?
The whispers say the same things over and over. What kind of entity would be so obsessed? I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. Watch out! Spectre possession! Think you could take on a ghost? You shouldn't stay in there. Spectre, going for a meat suit. I think I heard the sound of a gun calling. Have some of this! This looks definitely drinkable. Famous last words. Why hasn't the poison spread to the groundwater? Perhaps it shifts and shapes, like the void. Well, at the very least, it shifts. Looks like the ooze comes from a distinct source. A malignant will is placed upon this, just like the one we found earlier. We should find that ritual Seeker told us about. I've kept her notes about the hut location.
This whole country is rotten to the core. And you're just now reaching this conclusion? If I wanted your opinion, I'd give it to you. Perhaps if you gave me the space to have one, then we'd both be better off. Someone came through here, someone real, not just a shadow. Whoever it was, it looks like the ooze got them. What do you think, Antea? You wanted the space to have your own opinion. I'm giving it to you. This must be Antipas Gibbs. Hell of a fall to live through. Now join in any time, Antea. What do you think I'm doing? This is God's land. How could we let a witch come to our community? Instructing our children, no less. Tis no surprise. New Eden brims over with backsliders. The governor, chief amongst them. Aye. Many had to sicken and die for him to act. But the deed is not yet done. We must fight the Lord's good fight and cast the devil out for good. Many want to try the witch, aye. And many want to see her dead. Those oriental shapeshifters we fought in Bremen. Or oh, back, the Gibbs were so angry. Pure entitled bigotry. Maybe they were affected by the ooze. I mean, we've been snapping at each other since we got here. Something's toying with us. I think they made the ooze. I don't think the ooze made them. <laughs> Come back. We're not done here. This is the source. Where do we get to it? If we want to stop for a wee minute, 
this place a bit. Something tells me this is the condemned well. Do you think you could get that bucket down? A vivid memory from the dead is somewhere near. An echo from the past drifts by. The devil still breathes to her mouth. We are cursed, and you are sterling. Clemency, Antipas, please. The woman has been jailed. As per custom, she will face trial, and justice will be brought to this community. Coming from a magic user himself. But can you or your demonologist discernment really be trusted? You insinuate such blasphemy. I'm a man of faith. Then do what God commands of you. Governor, we ask for safety. If we do not get it, there will be consequences. The governor used Urim and Thummim, and that made his flock suspicious. Divination stones. He must have thrown them down the well when he sealed it. Why now? Hiding the evidence, perhaps, of his role in the witch trial, they connected him to the demonology he used to reinforce his authority. That echo proves that things were getting out of hand. For his son's safety and his own, Haskell must have feared the suspicious mouth. Alice, can he be good?
are you? If we speak, shall you listen? one is mine. things. are dangerous and I'd no reason to show mercy. Thing. 
Standing by. Your strikes do nothing. I need to be the one to face it. This thing is mine. Strikes do nothing. I can help. Your strikes are not helping. Let me. I need to be the one to face it. Right here, you know.
enough. Can we please get out of here? was awful. This trial. It was as if Deborah wanted us to face what she had faced. But all I feel is beaten. I feel judged. Like I'll never be understood again. Justice miscarried here. Of course. That's it. I know what that was. Such spectre of injustice has a name. The mythical infamy. I've only read about them. They're so rare, most think them a myth. Ignorance caused this. A raging epidemic drove them out of their minds. Unable to look within, they pointed the finger. And so a terrible ghost was born, and sickness piled on sickness. Haskell has so much to answer for. Ah, seems to be stuck.
That down there, it was, I was tense. I was impatient. Me too. That infamy really got to us. Years of anger coursed through me. Yet now I can't even remember why. Me neither. This is what an infamy does. It's over now. We're here. I said something to hurt you. I'm sorry. I forgive you. And I hope that you forgive me too. How refreshing it is to the soul to be at once. One thing above all else, my friends, is true. The wicked are at odds with themselves. Oh good, his latest sermon. We haven't missed it. The Lord's promise of salvation from hell pleases them. The Lord's salvation from misery and sin here on earth does not. This doesn't look like salvation from misery and sin. The wicked pray for deliverance from the fires of hell while piling the kindling high. They proclaim their love for their Lord, yet in his name, they serve themselves. Their self-regard crumbles in the light of their hateful iniquities. So, so true. Mr. McCraith, my friend, I'm so glad you agree. Now, the wicked man never questions... I have your answers. What? Yes, good. Perhaps we should discuss this privately, if you'll give me just a moment. Yeah, it's quite the story. You might not wish to hear it. Neither may the good people hear. Please, this is not the time. We want to hear the story. Let the banisher speak. Tell them, Red. Tell them good. Ah, there's a story that starts with a question. A question for you, Governor. And maybe for all the good people of New Eden. If I give you a witch, will you do what you did to Deborah Comenius? Comenius, say you? The school teacher walked with the devil and paid the appropriate price. That's the beginning of the history and also its end. Is it, though? Now, I've learned much about Deborah Comenius and what happened to her, and it tells a very different tale. And what story, pray you, does it tell? It tells the story of a man, a latter-day King Solomon. When plague struck his subjects, they turned to him for guidance and protection, for they were God-fearing folk, and he was a godly king. The king turned his flock to God, but it was not enough. The plague spread on. The king, worried about his position, needed a sacrificial lamb. You lose the run of your tongue, Mr. McCraith, and of the head to which it's fixed. There was no lamb. There was a trial. Fair and lawful. You're a pompous coward, fearful of anyone different, as human as that is. There must be a man to judge, or there is no order. A man to make the judgment, and a man to enforce it. Of all people, you know this. I live and let live. I choose only for the dead. I choose for the living. These people are sinners, sir and must be led back to the light. This is my mandate, my duty. Admit it, 
You toy with magic, you don't understand. You, sir, are jealous. I, sir, am tired. I've done my job, fulfilled my contract, I've found the source of the curse. The poison below the well is no more, no thanks to you. Aha! Poison it was then. The weapon of the wicked, to weaken the people's will. What was it, Belladonna, Hemlock, Foxglove? Betrayal, truth unspoken, secrets and lies, wrongs basically, your wrongs. The wrongs you visited upon Deborah Comenius, the wrongs that led to her death. She died at the hand of the body politic. She died at all our hands. Most of all, she died at her own. She died because she would not submit. Twas not my plan to kill her, stupid, stubborn woman. Why did she not confess? I would have granted clemency. I would have shown her mercy. You had the power to stop the madness, but instead you chose to let it run all the way to its barbaric conclusion. You brought the curse down on New Eden. Then you called we banishers in to fix your mistake. You boast of your knowledge of demons and spirits, but in truth, you master nothing. You're a peacock. All show and no meat. I'm not here today to bring justice. But this man, your governor, brought death to your doors. <laughs> he deserves blaming. And shame on me if I don't do it. <laughs> it's best. <sighs> Friends, have I ever not served the interests of our community? Have I not protected you? Have I not loved you? For good! Far from it. Then, who will protect us? I will. While Mr. McCraith fights the curse of New Eden, I will protect the people of the Harrows. Or at least, we'll try. Now let's all return to our homes and pray for forgiveness and uh, the strength to bear the consequences of our actions. Your fee. One of the many debts my father left me. You'd best put your own debts first, young Master Haskell. Don't I know it?
I hate this place. Rest up, then please, let's get out of here. You're angry, I can tell. Of course you can. Aren't you angry? I'm what? Disgusted. Disgusted by what we saw down there. By the sins Fairfax Haskell committed in the name of his god. I hope they'll burn in hell. For that I hate myself. Nothing can stand between us. Not even death. Not even death? The closer we get to my body, to the truth about what happened here, the stronger I feel. My senses rise. It's as if I can taste the silence, smell the scent of wood smoke, feel the warmth of your body, feel Deborah's wrath. I feel it as if it were my own. I know her rage. But that anger of mine, that fear, I thought when I left home, I'd left them behind. The past is the past. You still get to choose your future. Times like this, old wounds can ache. Seems normal. It's not just that. I thought I'd healed. I feel like I've taken ten steps backwards. So much so that the sister I thought was gone for good seems to be winding her way back to me. Your sister? Ayomi Day, wasn't it? No. As a child, before I left Cuba, I had a friend. I chose to call her my sister. That night, the night I died, I dreamed of her. I dreamed of Calendre. Are you sure it was a dream? Is that why you left the schoolhouse without me? Yes. It must have been a dream. She wasn't there. I mean, how could she have been there? But I heard her voice. I'd swear on it. How could that be? Dreams can be vivid. It can be difficult to separate them from reality. I was awake, Red. What did you hear her say? I don't know. I don't remember. I think she said we were family. Never to be divided. She's after my job. She can't have it. I'm your family now. Nothing's tearing us apart. No. Not even death. Still angry? Gloriously.
Ceridian? Uh, what do you mean, Ceridian? War! Ceridian, what's wrong? War! 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 I don't think she can hear us. We need to go back to the swamps. You understand that? But it's a bird. It's Ceridian, by way of the invisible, speaking through the crow. Pity it doesn't work both ways. Imagine having a conversation with someone far away. Can you feel it? I have goosebumps. The veil is tearing at the seam. This isn't good. Uneasy. Me too. If I bruise the bud so the spectres inside show themselves, you could shoot them. Once freed, the ivy should quickly wither. can get to that ivy from the other side. The wards have weakened. Ceridian's power wanes. The wards have weakened. Ceridian's power wanes. Nobody's home. I can feel it. Who oh, there? Where could they be?
If I bruise the bud so the specters inside show themselves, you could shoot them. Once freed, the ivy should quickly wither. Crows, they flock to that great tree up there. and cold. The Banishers are here. Already? How unfortunate. You called us. Did I? I thought I had more time. In the end, it runs out for all of us. As I depart this old carcass, I leave no burning heart behind. Go or stay. To prevail, you must first set your heart at peace. When at last you face the nightmare, you must both be clear on what you want. You must... What do you mean? It is not for me to give you answers, only to prepare you for what awaits. Then we can all go to sleep. Seeker doesn't hate you, Rory. She's just not used to being trusted. Protect her for me. Too late, old moss head, as ever. Time 
for peace. I forgive you, old man. I'm right here, you know. Old Mosshead is no more. He'll never drink from your skull now, will he? Another ancient promise broken. But what about me? How do I live now? You're all I ever had, and all I'll ever have. <laughs> Can I set the world on fire now? I just want to see it burn. A pity. Farewell, then. Ha <laughs> ha
she took me in with my father. When no one else wanted me. She taught me to stand up straight. Leave her be, for now. Hmm. I am tired of all this death. Want to talk about it? I will do. I... The heart's yours. The roots are mine. And precise. Well done. What will become of Seeker now? She'll try to make sense of her pain. Or perhaps she'll sit with it a while. Mm. I shall try to kill it. Grief knows no rule book. When I returned from the war, I walked the wet streets of London for a long time. All I could feel was my heart digging a hole deep inside my chest. After what I'd seen, I had done. 
I just wanted the pain to stop. I wanted oblivion. Your ghosts were killing you. They almost pushed you to insanity, but you pulled through. I let myself be drowned. You're the one who pulled me out. Poetic, if melancholic. What's going on, Red? I feel lost. I can't even stand myself. I can barely stand to look at you. Something eats me from within, and it's growing. I don't know what's happening. I'm scared. I scare me too. I am untethered from the world. But through you, I still feel like myself. I cling to this. The closer we get to my return, the further from life I feel. I care nothing for the living. I only care for what I can take from them. Do you feel that way about me too? No, of course not. What are we doing? We're reclaiming our world. The only way we can. Are you sure this is what you want? We made an agreement. Are you having second thoughts? I don't know. Maybe. Ceridian's death has changed things for you. Yeah. She had power, purpose. She had love and she still chose to leave. Maybe she's right. Should we reconsider? It may not be too late to change our minds, but you must promise me, Red, whatever we decide, we stick to it. We cannot change our minds again. I swear it, my love. This is it. Is it worse to lose your faith in your fathers than it is to lose faith in yourself? Those in the harrows who lived would be wise to look inwards, to reflect, and then to pay penance. But none carry a greater burden than young Lamentation Haskell. How will he guide the faltering faithful when he has so little faith in himself? Thank you. 
My father would tell me stories. In the heart of the mountains lived a mystical race who desired only peace. Couldn't hear him now. Uh, these mystics, he said, they valued life and used gold only for their mausoleums. All creatures were accepted among them, except the men who were warned to stay away, because they were bellicose and greedy. Let me guess, they went anyway. Aye, being bellicose, they did. And being greedy... They went after the gold. Their mausoleums desecrated, the mystics cursed the humans, and hid themselves away. They remind me of Ceridian. Good rest. Something's nearby. Where is it? Fair is foul and foul is fair. There is a lot of fog down there. Follow my lead. Hugging all the fun. Work this one out. The spot has to be close.
hugging all the fun. This place looks like the drawings on the map. The mountains must be rich in ore. It looks a bit rickety. Well, it's built for a team. One man alone should be fine. Should be. Not a pleasant way to die. Not a pleasant way to die, is it? Almost there.
Almost there. Won't budge. A tangle of rope work blocks it up. One more rope and it's done. I bet it's up there. You're going to need me for this one. Please show me. It's up there. One more rope and it's done. I bet it's up there.
One more rope and it's done. I bet it's up there. The lift should be freed now. Beams look fragile. Well, they hold. Would you rather climb? If it were up to me, I wouldn't be here to begin with. Climbed higher or has the weather gotten colder? The nightmare is at work. She's likely using the weather in New Eden to further isolate its people. Then once the curse is lifted, the snow will disappear. I think so. Nearby.
What's that thing have? It's up to no good. Ready and waiting. It's about to strike. Here, you know. Oh, I hate those things. Wasn't your first, won't be your last. Aye, thank you. Something's concealed. Something's here. Hidden. You're not a bad fellow to have around, you know. Had your doubts, did you? Don't get cocky. There's always more to learn. Key thing about a scourge? A scourge builds itself a body. Right. A scourge will always build a new physical body. Very good. Top marks. Want another? On the nature of a ghost, perhaps? Ghosts have ties, objects through which they're bound to someone living. Well, at least you have the basics. Not bad, I suppose. I hope it's enough. Do you hear that? Over here. Oh, Fardy! Did you see that? Let's follow it.
A peaceful place. In different times. Before the nightmare's influence, you mean? Let's reach the fort and a fire and warm you up. Who's that? Yes. Something's here. Something's concealed. Trouble ahead. Spectres are attacking the fort. Seek no ground! Hold fire! That fellow is not dead! Shepard, I said hold your fire! Help if you need it. That corpse is going to shoot. You're tougher than a gadfly! Devil take you! Hold there! None in, none out! Not living nor dead! Name's Red McCraith. I'm obviously a banisher. Open the door there. I've business within. Your business is, if you'll excuse my articulating the evidence, not my business. I have my orders. You can't come in. I hear you, friend. What's your name? The name's Andrew White. You seem a pleasant fellow. I like a Scot, me, but standing here, I'm on duty. And when I'm on duty, I'm not your friend. Uh, listen, mate. Folk in here have problems enough, and I can't be disobeying orders. Either Priest or Pennington would have my guts, and I fancy neither. Pennington knows me. He'll know I can help. I'm sure he does. But put one dead man down, and three come back next day. Round here, sweet victory fast turns bitter. Bottom line is... The captain is indisposed, and I'll not add your complications to the pile. Now, you want to lend a hand? Mrs. Priest and her party are overdue. You can't miss the outpost. It looks out across the valley. If you could find her, and make sure she doesn't die, you'd surely gain her favor. And favor, as they say, opens doors. Get in a fight and find your boss and dig her out of whatever hole she's in. All right. I can do that. They have spectre troubles. Let's first clear the nearby nest to relieve the fort, then deal with the missing. How holds the fort? How holds the fort? Precariously, that's how. Our strength dwindles, and we'll soon run out of powder. Praise to Williams and that other fella. And off they went, scavenging for supplies. They've not yet returned. It's dangerous out there. The scavenger may easily become the carrion. Heard any good scuttle lately? The dead are coming, and you want to gossip. 
I admire your sang Freud, and that's the Lord's truth, but now, sir, is not the time. Right. I'll likely be back. Find our friends, Banisher. Or put them to rest. I'll try. As soon as I take care of the Spectre's nest, I'll go looking for the outpost. Death knocks at their gates. No wonder they won't open. They don't have a choice. Another attack may overrun them. The nest might be near. There's a trail to follow in the snow. More coming. Come and get your breakfast, boys. That corpse is going to be too soft. Get in its face. Move, Red! Rending specters. The fort will run out of powder. These pests don't spring from nowhere. I should buy the fort a little time. Let's hope it's not too late for the famous Mrs. Priest. I wonder how many there are in the fort. Fewer by the day, I'll wager. Still, I'd have to be inside the night. Oh, 
was more of. with spectres. Did the foraging party really come this way? That would explain why they haven't returned. I feel something close. Nothing's concealed. This one's not been dead long. Mm, let's hope he stays that way. According to the map, the treasure should be near. Reinforcements!
My bolt is shot! Behind you! A timely arrival. You'll be Haskell's banishers. Thank you. Thank you both. You can see me. Clear as day, just as I can see. This is my husband. I am Helen Priest. And Thea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McGraith. It is rare that the living can see the lingering dead. All I know is one day I woke after seven long years of grief, and my Sebastian was back. It was as if my prayers had at last been answered. That was enough for me. In times of danger, I am duty-bound to protect the woman I love. You understand? Seven years. Why come back now? It did not feel like seven years. Suddenly, I felt her pain calling to me. Divine intervention or otherwise, all that matters is that my dear Sebastian is back. Now, when I need him most. Andrew White sent us. He thought you might be in trouble. Plainly, you needed your guardian angel. We needed more than one. Thanks to you, we'll resupply the camp. Matthews and Williams did not die in vain. This was a risky expedition. But Helen had no choice. If the survivors were to rely on Pennington alone, the fort would have already fallen. You're well capable of fighting the living, tis clear. It was reckless to think you could take on the dead. We have lost many of our comrades. We measured the risk. It was not reckless. Pennington did this while monsters relentless besieged the fort. But make no mistake, these men's deaths are on the captain's conscience. If he has one. How so? Seven years ago, a plague came to New Eden. Pennington quarantined the sick in the mines, walled them up. They were dark times. Hard times. None knew what the morrow would bring. We all lost much. Too much. As second in command, Sebastian volunteered to stay. Walled in with the others, he held out the longest. He died a hero. And now the Forsaken are rising. They demand revenge. Who would blame them? I watched them die. Soldiers and miners. Sick and hungry, begging for help they knew would never come. Captain Pennington has much blood on his hands. I'm sorry. You've been through a lot. We have. We are, and will persist till we prevail. We should get back to the fort. We will escort you. I'm afraid I locked us in when I broke the latch. If there's a way out, we'll find it.
Lock looks broken. I doubt that gate will ever open again. Soldiers usually carry their ghosts with them. War is good for our business. I take it that's how you met. I know a soldier when I see him fight. I never worked for the army, but something like that. miserable powder boxes. How low has Pennington brought us? If you didn't like him, why did you follow him? I followed his reputation, but he's no longer the same man. What would you do in his place? I'm doing it. He sits behind his walls waiting for them to fall, and I'm out here fighting to live. We're fighting for our lives. A captain is in the way. These internal conflicts are a risk for the stability of the fort. A necessary risk for the survival of all. But I agree. This must end. You may leave the crates. I'll send someone back for them. Yeah, the path should be quiet. We cleared the area of the Spectre's Nest. Well, that's a relief. Follow me. to Pennington. Make him understand, if you can. Where can I find him? He hides in his office. I'll find him there. Where are the others? Williams and the other chap. May God have mercy on their souls.
Captain Bennington. No time, no way out, no hope, no way in. No time, no time at all. Captain Pennington, sir. Mr. McRaith, you live. There's work to be done. Work? You had work, a mission. To bring one last glimmer of hope, to gladden our hearts before the pit takes us all. You secretive bastards haven't helped. The job is done. There's no more open, little enough time. All that remains is the pit. Welcome to the last stand, McGrath. Welcome to the end. I wouldn't surrender just yet, Captain. I found Helen Priest. We brought supplies. A waste of effort on both accounts. Hardly. We saved a life. Resupplied, you may save more. For the sake of what? For the sake of days? A week, perhaps? You've saved no one. You've prolonged the terror. The dead will come. Our throats will feel their bony fingers soon enough. The end is inevitable. It is if you will not act. You're the officer. Take command. Surely you can't intend to do nothing. You sound like Priest. She has changed. Her return to Fort Jericho has made her impulsive, irrational, quarrelsome. I believe she did not fully grieve her husband's loss. Returning to the scene has, it seems, reopened the wound. It festers. She'll join the lieutenant soon enough. When our defences crumble at the last, the pit shall take us all. How do things stand, Captain, as you see them? Uh, little has changed. The dead flood from the mines. We shoot them down and gain respite. Soon, the onslaught begins anew. The clock of our extinction ticks on towards the hour. We may no more defeat the dead than we may vanquish the ocean waves. Folk have little enough hope, and you're leading them further into the darkness. I've heard the whispers, the murmurs, the plotting from the shadows. We owe to the last. We resist, till retribution rises from the pit and drags us all to hell. Well, that's something worth waiting for. I fail to see the appeal of this slow agony. How unfortunate. Because thanks to you, and the time you bought us, the agony will be all the slower. Fair to say your tactical retreat from New Eden Town has not served you. The town was doomed to fall to the curse. We disagreed on everything. There was nothing left to do but leave. We did not know there'd be no escape. No Smith gathered the board and the governor let the afeard flock to him. We never agreed on anything in the first place. I crossed paths with the new Smith party. Thick skin did not make it. Shame. She had a proper head on her shoulders. Without her, the band will suffer. The governor is no more. His son takes charge. They rebuild as best they can. <laughs> Little Lammy Haskell, truly. Well, better him than his father. May the vacuous peacock rest in peace.
As the commanding officer, you must know all the local lumps and bumps. The lumps and bumps can smooth themselves. I have other priorities. Why did you come to New Eden, Captain? Why here? Far from the many wars we fight, you mean? I had shot enough Frenchmen and more than enough Indians. Did no one come with you? Keep to your business, son, not mine. It's just there's a portrait hanging on the wall. A family. I had a wife and daughter once. Once. I'll not entertain you with their story. Tell me more about yourself and your career. I did my duty and had the fortune to return alive. That's all. We who are intimate with war tell no tales. I thought that too. I was wrong. Silence allowed my ghosts to prosper. It is good to tell our stories. If ever I do tell, I'll not be telling you, son. Permission to take my leave, Captain. And if I refuse it? Are you trying to recruit me, Captain? Do you really think I'd take the King's shilling? <laughs> if I were to offer enough shillings, I'm sure of it. I need no new lieutenants. But if you wish, you may stay. This key unlocks the unused watchtower. You'll bill it while you're here. On the one hand, a captain beaten by the world. On the other, his rival, haunted and mutinous. In a fort besieged by vengeful spectres. I know the shit, there's something else. Something darker. Vanishes. May I have a word? Helen, something wrong? Apologies for disturbing your rest. I'm afraid it can't wait. What did you think of the captain? I saw an officer alone. A proud man turned to stone, perhaps, by years of war. I saw a broken man. I did not see the tyrant you described. Inaction is tyranny. He will not act, but nor will he get the hell out of the way. I do not disagree, but the captain needs help. I too was a soldier, broken and haunted. With Antea's help, I recovered. Pennington may need the same. Leave Pennington to me. The good folk of the fort need your help. You are banishers. The dead, you'll have noticed, hammer at the gates. I would like you to go into the mines and find out what enrages them so. I would like you to do what the captain will not. 
And while we deal with the hordes of angry spectres, what shall you be doing? When the mines are purged, I'll oust Pennington. Where do we go? There is a second tunnel into the mines. The entryway was walled shut during the quarantine. Getting there will not be easy, but the barricade should fall without too much difficulty. After that, who knows? Underground again. Wonderful. If it soothes you, I too am taking a significant risk. The captain has a penchant for locking people up and leaving them to rot. Some years ago in New Eden Town, the captain locked up an innocent woman. A fate I wish to avoid. Pennington the Jailer. Do you speak of Deborah? What did he do? I was away from New Eden Town at the time. Rumours said she was a witch, I later heard. And so too did the captain. The court agreed. Who knows what urges drove the captain then? He is a secretive man, and always has been. How goes it with Sebastian? I'm not sure. I had never let go of my grief. I was bereft. Empty. His absence gave me substance. I clung to it. Useless, really. My husband died in the dark, with nothing but my handkerchief to soothe his last moments. And now, he's back. If each worthwhile thing in life is to be lived, and then when it is gone, to be grieved, then what now? I have to believe our love is enough. Love is all. Grief can hang. <laughs> and yet I cannot hold him. I cannot feel his warmth. He is there, but he is not there. That hurts. All things are fleeting. Gaze upon the ghost you love and you can't deny it. Bitter though the thought may be. Yes, tis a blessing and a curse. Yet against all reason, we persist. Let us make the most of time remaining. Much goes on around here, and you seem to know about all of it. I try, and I could do something about it if the captain was out of the way. What brought you to New Eden? I came with Sebastian, willingly, mind you. My father was a soldier. I knew there'd be travel. Sebastian courted me for three years. I swore when we married I'd follow him to the end of the earth. And here we are. How's morale about the fort? The fort is known better days. Not many, mind. It's always been miserable. Folk deserve better. They fought so hard and lost so much. The captain must show them a future. Is it your belief that Pennington's quarantine lies at the heart of the problem here? That this is why the dead rage so? What else? He walled them in. Miners, nurses, soldiers, the healthy or the sick, he buried them all. And then he lied about it. I'll brook his callous cowardice no more. We should go. Then it's agreed. When you're ready, you'll investigate the mines. Take the hoist to the waterfall, near the outpost you first found me. From there, it is not far to the tunnel. Keep your wits and all your luck about you. An innocent woman, jailed.
I mean, as wolf pelts go, it's, it's barbaric. barbaric. But have more An than officer enough must be just, or else it all unravels. Helen is right. The truth lies down there, merchant. somewhere. Sell it. I Add suspect so Deborah is at it again. Turn, they shall be naked and rich, and I shall sell them wolf. You've saved our sorry asses, sir. Of that, there is no doubt. You've earned us a rare bit of rest, and that comes most welcome. You're right, soldier. You look drop dead weary. The dead don't sleep, do they? And me being asleep won't stop them coming. Can no one take your shift? We're short-handed as it is. Besides, I can rest and keep watch at the same time. Old soldier trick. Old bullshit out of sight. What's going on? Oh, what do you care? I have my problems and you have yours, so let me handle myself. I ain't important, and I don't deserve no help. Wasted time helping me anyway. You heard the man. He wants no help. I see no reason to force it on him. For now, at least. Our folk doing? Fighting fit? Well, they're farmers, most of them. Shopkeepers. House servants, hunters. We've one old soldier, but he's sick. Them who stand, stand dead on their feet. Fighting fit, my arse. But we hold against the hordes of the dead. For now, leastways. The fight's not fair, does it? Well, that's wrong. We're doing our best to put it right. Wherefore, the paradise of New Eden, eh? What a hole we've made of it. Mind you, if we stop digging, we die. Had any good scuttle lately? I'll spill it if I have it, but be quick, I'm busy. We've known an officer or three, you and me. So, tell me about the captain. In nigh on 20 years service, I've not met a commander more efficient. Nor one so relentless. Ever a pain in the ass, I. But a good one. But that was then and this is now. He's not the man he was. Still a pain in the ass, mind. What think you now of Helen Priest? Ah, she's like her husband. Only yet better. Command is in her blood. She reminds me of my old mum. The Queen of Topsfield Common, we used to call her. Born to give orders, she was. And you dare not disobey. Did you know Sebastian Priest? I surely did. Good man. Hell of a soldier. Had kingly ideals, but did not strut like a crow in the gutter. Hero is an ill-used tack. Oft misassigned. But Lieutenant Priest was a hero. And a proper one at that. Peaceful watch to you.
I'd like to help him. Old soldier and all. All right. Let's start with his billet. Have you found the old entrance to the mines? We are working on it. Good. If I may help. Farewell, Helen. I'll be seeing... How often must we argue? We shall argue until you hear me. I hear you all too well. I hear a hoggish harridan, a narrow nag, a selfish shrew. One of these days I shall poison you soon. And the day before, I'll take you to the highest cliff and push you off it. Mr. Peabody, I shall drain the first boil. Ready? Same sudden question every sudden time. No, I'm not dumb well ready. Excellent. Then we'll begin. Be careful, goddammit! Careful! Gah! I know. I know. Shh. Oh, there are you, Queen Mary Stuart. Well, I've met Mary the Second, and she's a little prettier than I. I'm Red McCraith. I'm a banisher. Ah, the banisher come to gloat at sick old Cotton Peabody. Well, piss off. There's a sudden stink of death in here, Scotsman, and it ain't from me. Where did you fight, soldier? None of your business, Scotsman. This comrade is mine. No one wants to talk to you. <laughs> You're no soldier. You're a brawler and a rebel, and if you fought at all, I'll wager you lost. I'm a proper soldier, me. Self-made, too. Left the family farm and signed up to fight them Indians. I learned the hard way, in the blood and the snow. Fought under the captain himself, I did, and followed him here and joined the train band. When did you get sick? What's it to you? I'm not so sick as I can't give some nosy Scotsman what for. <laughs> when I'm sick, I get surly too. What's the word around here? No one tattles to me stuck in here. Captain came by once, worried for Andrew White. Seems the old boy screams in his sleep. There's a lot of it about. White's a gate guard, right? What's his story? He sees ghosts in his sleep. He's dreaming. Real ghosts come when you're awake. Tell me about the captain. Speak freely, I'll not get back to him. Let you get back to him. The captain is the best of us and I'm proud to serve him. Proud too to give him my guidance when he'd call. Not that he calls no more. Suppose he has too much on his plate. Time's precious for the likes of the captain, eh? You tell me about Helen Priest. I promise it won't get back to her. Lieutenant's wife. Stood second to the captain herself. Now she's in command. Quiet the rise, no? How's life about the fort? 
What do you want to hear? It's cold. We're hungry. Welcome to paradise. As you were, Mr. Peabody. See you about. Not like I can go anywhere anyways. <sighs> These look nasty. Poor man. Never a good sign. My apologies. I did not wish to hush you. I just prefer to focus on one patient at a time. Welcome to the infirmary. I'm Nurse Wings. Anne, if it sets you at ease. I'm a banisher. Name's McCraith. You may call me Red. Red. A pleasure to see a friendly face. Or any face at all. What can I do for you? So, how'd you end up here? What brought you to nursing? That, sir, is a personal question. I'm a personable man. That's not the same thing. I was sick as a child. Very sick. Afterwards, I swore I'd serve others when they were sick. And here I am. What about you? I was... Well, I was haunted. Someone cared for me. Saved me from my ghosts. Now I do the same. A fine story. I'll not bore you with more. Times being as they are, how come you only have the one patient? Mr. Peabody's illness is unsightly. Fort Jericho has a history of contagion. Folk worry. Did you not fear infection? If I did, I would not show it. What does he have? Not my place to say. You'll have to ask him yourself. All right. I'll not press you. What's the word around here? No, I don't see folk much. I stay here, keep to myself. No visitors? No other patients? Helen Prees comes when she can. Captain Pennington would sometimes visit Mr. Peabody, but I haven't seen him in a while now. What can you tell me about Captain Pennington? He fought King Philip and the Wampanoag. Led his company well, I'm told. It's not for me to like or dislike him, unpleasant though he may be. Tell me about Helen Priest. The bold lieutenant's widow. He's dead some years now, and she's not remarried. She's as much a soldier as her husband was. A fighter. Commanding, too. Even dead, you can see his influence in her bearing. I think I know how that feels. What about you? How do you feel? Oh, I'm alive and well. I'll not complain. I can be strong for those less fortunate. You're a good soul, Nurse Wings. I do my best, Mr. McCraith. I'm sure you do yours. Farewell, Nurse Wings. Farewell, and good health, sir. requires a key.
Train band records are upstairs from the armory. Good to know. All right. Where's the armory? Pretty empty armory. Looks like someone's been living in here. Ready for another ride? Circumstances aside, this is quite romantic. Swarming hordes of spectres aren't to your liking. They are if I'm with you. mind. Not as romantic as you'd thought, eh? Maybe now's the time to ask you to marry me. Try it and I'll cut the rope.
There might be a way to open this door from the other side. Now this place looks like the drawings on the map. It's about to shoot. They're vexed now. View. Every morning I wake to a better one. Are you trying to tell me, lady? I'll warn you. She left my work. See these body parts? Good place to manifest what may linger nearby. My voice commands you! Unveil! Think you could take on a ghost? Did we miss a few? Help if you need it. What is luck in here? Time to work, Banisher. There's another way in. This isn't over yet.
yours. The roots are mine. How I like it. Vanishes. So you found your way. Sebastian, what are you doing here? Difficult though it be to walk these dark tunnels, I'll guide you as best I can. And you sure you want to come? You don't have to. I must. For Helen. What shall we find down there? The rage of the Forsaken. They trusted him. He betrayed them. He abandoned them. I doubt they can be placated. Pennington did a great and terrible thing. Your death must feel like an outrage. I am a soldier. I took the shilling. Death is part of the bargain. One dies, so many may live. I served the sick and the dying. When my turn came, I was ready. But now, in the fort, there is no noble sacrifice. One dies, so all may also die. Tell us a little more about Helen. Now, I'm not sure what more I could tell you. My wife is a strong woman. What you see is what you get. Every day I feel blessed to have a partner and best friend by my side. I had never expected her. When she came into my life, I came home to myself. <laughs> Made me want to be a better man. Oh, I know the feeling. She gave me a handkerchief. I died clutching it. A symbol of our love. She was and is ever in my thoughts. She is my world, now until the end. We must press on. Stay close. Whenever you're ready. Not far now, till you find what you need. I hope. Pity. I was enjoying this wee promenade. down from here.
Everything all right? Let's just get this over. Pennington ordered the barricades fast. I barely had time to bid Helen farewell. That must have been the The soldier is called to suffer. I have another in sight. of these soldiers were angry. Soldiers weren't spared. Those not taken by sickness or thirst died of despair. Which one took you? Despair. Most definitely. These tunnels go surprisingly deep. In its heyday, it was quite the operation. <laughs> See this thing? Car upon car rose to the surface, piled high with ore. Ghostly voices stain this place. I told Gray the tunnels were hellish hot. But Wilson says he can't do much about it. Keep feeding the furnace, says he, if you want your meagre pay. <laughs> that sounds nasty. You all right? Don't fancy working here with the furnaces running. The work men did here was meant to make New Eden rich. Did the miners abandon their work when sickness hit? They worked till they could work no more. There's a strong spectral presence down there. A lot of us died down here. What the hell was that? Uh oh. Shit. 
shift your balance. Ready and waiting. Nice of you to join us, Sebastian. Care to explain what the hell we just heard? I... I can't. What now? Uh, I say we just pass the blockade. Follow me, please. Remember the wicked will I felt earlier? The same spell is upon this. We should find that ritual Seeker told us about. I've kept her notes about the hut location.
What's this? A makeshift checkpoint. The halfway mark. Are they expecting to face a regiment? In a way. We knew the dying would try to fight. We had to keep them from infecting the rest. Charming. Can't blame a man for wanting to make it home alive. Why they should fear battles. Standing by. This miner was shot. Was there a mutiny? There was. We failed. Why did you not mention this before? My heart felt apologies. What is that? This is no ordinary spectre, that's for sure. Perhaps in our pain, screaming to be free, we made changes. More importantly, how do we break them? I see a weak link. Ray, I see. Well, it was down here, they're not like that. That spectre's seen a corpse and it wants it for its own. It's about to shoot. Stay on your feet, Red. Try this, sword. Spectral stains block the mechanism.
Red, look at this. Ghostly voices stay in this place. They told us to stay put for a few days and we listened. When days turned to weeks, we made do. Now food's running low and they've bolted the doors. We must act now, for it's too late. Red, come look. Don't fret, we're coming for you. This creature, I, I don't think I'm ready to face it. Turn back. Why? I, I, I don't know. I thought maybe it should be. See you, whatever is down there.
What's that mark mean? I've seen it in books. Necromancy. Corpse raising, spirit control, that kind of thing. Have you heard of a ghost able to raise the dead and control them? I thought they were myths. Perhaps I was wrong. But we do our work. Come on, let's break these chains. Something blocks the mechanism above the door. Can you get to it? Pennington thought everything was fine. Really? He lied. He manipulated them all. He must face justice. We want proof. What more do you need? The captain must pay. Feel something close.
Resonate here. Lay down your weapon, Prospector, and stand away. I'll not say it twice. Hear me. I'm not your fool. Obey the order. Put the pickaxe down. Your uniform won't protect your son. Your officer will bury us all. He'll bury us all. He'll bury us all. He meaning Pennington, right? Who else?
Watch out! Spectre possession! I have another in sight. Sebastian, what is this place? It's nothing. It's... It's only... The people were angry. And for good reason. Rebel camp. We change the guard when they bring the food. The old ones scarper while the new ones are still busy with the victuals. While they have their hands full, we take them. Right, Sebastian, fess up. What's going on? What matters is that Pennington must pay. There is nothing else. Weapons, sabotage plans? Just how bad was the revolt? Not as bad as Pennington burying us all alive. That's no answer. this? A black market shopping list? Can't be. We had few rations. Many starved. Sebastian Priest, in the mine you were to tend to the sick. Instead, you afflicted them. What? No! This is a, a heinous lie. I gave my life for it. You turned into a tyrant until revolt emerged among the exhausted survivors. They, they, they must have gone mad down in the dark. Their, their rage found a target in me, the, the captain's man. I died innocent. I, I died a hero. You're a murdering coward. Blame Pennington all you want. We know it is a lie. I didn't. I, I never did that. It's not me. It's all a lie. I love Helen with all my heart. Pennington must pay. You must make Pennington pay for his crimes. You'll not get away with this, Sebastian. Come back here, you coward. I don't think he's coming back. The path is clear. We go deeper. I can't believe Sebastian lied to us all. To Helen. Is this why the creature is angry? I wouldn't be. Perhaps. Sebastian wants Pennington to be punished at all costs, and I'm not sure why. <laughs>
left to die in sickness and starvation. Helen was right. This was an atrocity. But she blamed the wrong man. The sight of them makes me wonder if their resistance was even worth it in the end. They're standing amidst their bodies with nothing but silence for your answer. These must be Sebastian's remains. Curious. The priest said he was the last to die. Said he shot himself when hope ran out. That someone stove this fella's head in with a pike. This was no romantic suicide. This was bloody murder. Plus, there's no ghost tie. And look, the mark from before. No ghost tie. So why did he not pale and become a spectre like the rest? Sebastian told Helen a story. His prominent chest wound was part of it. But it's a fiction. He spun her a lie. I'm starting to doubt the lieutenant's ghost. I think it's an effigy of Sebastian sent to get close to Helen. Maybe even to Pennington. Not a spectre. Something more elaborate. But what? And why? Sebastian is a doll. Stuffed with stolen memory made by whatever lurks down here. It's leeching Helen's essence. We must tell her. Whatever about Helen. First we need to find the dome maker.
standing by. Appreciate you staying close. The stink has long since gone, but I swear I smell it anyway. getting close. A safe harbor, should we need a moment's peace.
echo whispering to me. requires a key. A ghost left a fragment of their past here. Pennington's presence gives it life. Another ghost rallying the wrath of lesser spectres to its cause. This is about the agony of Deborah Comenius. Aye, and the guilt of the people of New Eden. Can you see it? Not yet. I hear you. 
Right? Pennington had you arrested and clapped you in chains. A broken body, locked away, forgotten, down in the dark, lift the heavy chains from her. If we do, will you talk with us? Check chat then. Here it comes. The chains are coming undone. This is your chance. Oh, bad timing. Lift these chains from me! Her last strike weakened the chains. Free her! Get this next step. The chains are coming undone. This is your chance. Overhead, the roof is crumbling. Down there. Her last strike weakens the chains. Free her. Let me out! 
standing by. I've got it. This is not pleasant. Look to me.
Me red. They will know the pain. Ah. 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 These chains from me. It's over. Go in peace. No peace. No pardon. Naught but darkness and decay. No. All this must stop and you must stop it. Dark decay and the maddest words of the worst of men. Whose words? Pennington's? The worst of men out. When the maddening silence becomes the darkest night, the faintest voice is welcome as the dawn. Deborah.
I've had enough mines for a lifetime. Can we go now? What was that thing? A puppeteer. Every dead thing we've met was controlled by its anguish. Sebastian especially. The miners were wronged, but Pennington's dereliction of Deborah is what caused all this. So what now? Helen's grip on power was already fragile. We found out that her husband was a spy. Is Pennington any more trustworthy? He let everyone suffer so he wouldn't have to face his own cruelty. But eventually, we'll get to take sides. <laughs> Is it? The rush after the fight. He'll pass. It's Sebastian, isn't it? You know I'm me, right? That I'm no puppet. Aye. Do you, though? Aye. My head may say different, but I know it in my heart. Fresh air, at last. You did well down there, young man. Thank you, Master. Justice. Justice long denied. Wait! Thought you'd been killed in the mines. Tomb blow lie dead in the mines. Neither one more word, nor a move from you. The mines are cleansed of their madness. Which is more than I can say for this room. You banished the thing in a pit. Truly. It's gone. Aye. The puppeteer is no more. The siege is lifted. Don't get excited. You're still up to your neck in shite. You've still to answer for what you did, and what you did not. I do not answer to civilians, nor to mutineers. You will answer to the dead. Once a woman in chains cried out and you did not listen. This is why you're cursed. Confess. Your future, and the future of many, depends on it. I'll confess there is no future. I'll confess I led us here to make our final stand. And we still stand. To that, I'll confess, and claim the credit. We fall one by one. Then we weep, we rage, but we stay loyal and true. Even the widows must stay true. 
In fear you dither while folk die. Soldiers will not long stay loyal to a coward. I do not fear a future already written. The die is cast. I dither not. I hold. I hold and watch the end unfold. There's more to this. An older guilt. A deeper fear. You may be to blame for the tragedy in the mines, Pennington, or you may not. But the puppeteer wanted you dead. Some years back, you accused a local woman of witchcraft. You locked her up. The puppeteer was quite angry about that. Fairfax Haskell, too, played a part in the killing of Deborah Comenius. He faced up to his wrongs. Now you will face up to yours. At last the die stopped rolling and my number has come up. I'll tell it now. I'll tell it all. When you slandered her, you knew there'd be a witch hunt. Why'd you do it? There was no slander. It was true. She was corrupt. She was evil. And she was a school teacher. Someone had to think of the children. It's horse shit. But he seems to believe it. We're getting closer to the truth. You clapped her in irons and threw her in jail. You took her humanity. You recognized her in the puppeteer, didn't you? I'm sorry, puppeteer? That's what was in the minds, wasn't it? And you knew, didn't you? How long, for how long have you known? What I know and you do not would fill a library. Sebastian's sway over Helen is dangerous. If she takes charge, so does he. But Pennington is depraved and merits no saving. What's your thinking? I have faith in Helen Priest. Step down, Captain. Perhaps you may begin to wash your guilt away. Do what you must, and face the consequences. Cast the die. I will. You failed, Captain. As an officer. As a man. You brought a curse upon the people of New Eden. No. The fort needs a leader without blood on her hands. I'll do it. I'll place the blame where it belongs. How Marif, how Gunja. To the death. When has a man seen and done too much as a soldier, a leader? Father. Down with tyranny. Justice prevails. If we are to survive, there is much to do, and survive we shall. For the record, beyond that door, Captain Pennington was tried and executed for his crimes. We did what was needed. The story you tell is up to you.
Looks like the nightmare's curse is lifted here. Job done. Enough, John. I'll not listen to another moment of your ranting. Tis no rant, woman. Pennington's backbone is gone, and we're all suffering. The captain's a war. So, what now? What did Ceridian say when we first met her? Once we'd weakened the Nightmare's influence, we could use the Void to enter its lair. Deborah's grip on the settlers has diminished. We'll return to Ceridian's island. From there, the Void Breach will take us back to New Eden Town. Just like that, eh? Well, yes, just like that. Something bothering you. But aren't we rushing things a little? We've lost too much time already. We have a nightmare to confront, remember? Sometimes I hate the world. Another free woman, bright, sensitive, kind, murdered by a craven rabble too weak to face its own mediocrity. Cowards hiding behind fake virtue. And for what? They won't even say her name. Why? Why her? You said it yourself. Deborah was a victim of their fear. That's not enough. Her murder was another throw of a dice. Why is it always us who have to pay with our lives? Other innocents have paid the same price. I should know. That's not what I meant, but I'm glad to hear your feelings on it. When I left Cuba, anything could have befallen me. I was bright, free, talented. Though I had the wrong tongue. The wrong sex, the wrong skin. I defied life. I expected so much more from the world. I was arrogant. Arrogant to believe I needed no one. To shut out my mother and experience curandera and listen instead to my sister. Your childhood friend. What happened? I had little and wanted more. A dangerous thing when you have our type of talent. Anything could have befallen me, but it didn't. But something did happen. Something happened to Deborah, and then something happened to you, and now... Now we are both paying that price. You still have your life. What's it worth if it's played by the murder of all those I killed? Don't make this about you, Red. I wasn't. Look, all this is a lot to endure. We're both exhausted. I know I am. I cannot tire. I know. I know how hard it's been for you. You have no idea. None at all. I'll do my best to understand, if you'll let me. We should have faith. Look at us. We'll get to where we're going. Shut up, Red. Shut up. This isn't about... This isn't about what we have conquered or what we have achieved or how far we have journeyed. Look at us. Look at me. I loathe what I've become. Can't you see that? I was trying to help. (laughs) 
I'm sorry. Stop apologizing. Good night. Mantea. Mantea. I would have gone with you. Not funny. I have to walk to the stupid bloody island. 